Uh, some news with Mike Pence. Uh, he ended up testifying after all of the twists and the turns and the fainting couches and the protesting too much. He testified. He always knew he was going to have to testify. Exactly. It was before a federal grand jury investigating the January 6th insurrection. This is according to a source familiar with the matter. This is the grand jury that was convened by special counsel Jack Smith investigating former President Donald Trump's efforts to overturn his 2020 election loss and stay in power. Two black SUVs entered the courthouse garage around 9 a.m. yesterday, an entrance that would allow witnesses to head up to the grand jury rooms without being seen by the public. The SUVs left the courthouse about 4.30 p.m. NBC News has learned special counsel Jack Smith's team is particularly interested in Trump's efforts to try to block the certification of the election. And Joe, I guess, you know, the na that naivete in me would say, why wouldn't he want to testify about something so important? I mean, if if... If you follow Mike Pence, there, there might be a lot of things that you think are a little bit, you know, well, why did he serve for Trump for so long? What what was his motivation? At the same time, if it was his commitment to the country, right. isn't his commitment to the country also to testify about this? Well, I, I, listen, I, he, he had to know. His lawyers had to tell him from the very beginning because we could have told him from the very beginning, you're going to have to testify. You look at every one of these issues. The Supreme Court has all, they've been brushing aside assertions of privilege from the very beginning. They're not going to stand in the way of any investigation regarding January the 6th. They, they, yeah. they again, 63, 64 times these federal judges, even, even federal judges who were appointed by the Federalist Society, didn't buy into any of the lies regarding the widespread uh, election fraud. They're just not playing. So Pence knew this, but he could look like the reluctant witness for Republican primary voters. Uh, it's what he did, but he, he knew he was going to have to go there. And so, David, you're the one with all the great DOJ sources. Come on, <laughs> spill it right here. What are they doing? Where are they going? I, I, I know a lot of people uh, are, uh, like Claire McCaskill says, justice delayed is justice denied. I, I understand this January 6th case is the most complicated. It doesn't seem like that obstruction case is, is so complicated on the documents. What, talk about the DOJ's pacing of, of their investigations. I think it's picked up a lot under Jack Smith. Um, the last, the most important January 6th witness in terms of, you know, Trump's mindset, his intent is Mike Pence. They had all these conversations. Did Trump knowingly pressure him to overturn the results of the election? You know, should he, did he know or should he have known that this was illegal? So this is, I think, was a big step forward. I'm glad Pence did this. I think he deserves credit for what he did on January 6th. Yeah. You know, there's talk of, you know, and then the obstruction case is also a very clear case. So I think you could see Jack Smith, you know, doing something, making a decision this summer, maybe. But I, summer. I think he has. It's going to be a busy summer. It's going to be a very busy summer, but he's been very aggressive on all these fronts, yeah. both January 6th and the, the classified documents case. Yeah. And Danny, I'm curious, your take not only on this, but also on all of the cases, it is a potpourri. For, for us to pick from. I will tell you what, what I've seen in polling, and it, and it makes sense, actually, is, I mean, we all get the obstruction. He did something that Biden, Pence didn't do. There's something about that Georgia case that really rankles voters. You look at polls, and they go, yeah, we hear the phone call where he's talking to one of his supporters, and he's saying, rig this election. Just get me enough votes to overturn it. That's coming this summer. The documents case most likely oh. coming this summer. I'm sure January 6th may be after all of that because it is such a complex case. Uh, but, but, but how do you see all of these things lining up? Understanding we're going to be in full election mode by late August, early September. We've entered the twilight zone because we may be thinking about what courts will prioritize their criminal prosecution of a former president over the next year. And how will these courts decide whether or not to have trial before or after the election? I mean, it's really not always just up to the courts. Courts will work with litigants. So the real question becomes, what do the litigants want? What does Trump want? 
What does the government want if they indict him? Uh, and going back to Georgia, you're right. I mean, I always thought that Georgia presented a real threat, and that's because I never imagined that New York County, uh, the Manhattan DA, posed right. any threat. I mean, that's just my opinion. I didn't think that was that was not a case that was high on my list of potential. By the way, let, let's circle back to that because we asked the question at the time. Why did he bring that? Like, if he was going to bring, if, if, if Alvin Bragg was going to bring that, I expected more because he had said no a year before. He comes back later. I'm thinking, well, 847 million uh, counts of, of, uh, yeah, of felonies. There has to be something there, right? There was nothing. Not, nothing that he didn't have a year before when he decided not to go forward. Have you figured that out yet? Exactly right. And all the counts were related to hush money payments, which I think are hugely problematic because this was a, I guess you'd call it a task force of really brilliant people, including Mark Pomerantz, who wrote a tell-all book about right. it, which gave me, really for me, was like a uh, groundbreaking event because you, for the first time, a defense attorney like me got a look at the inner workings of a task force of really brilliant prosecutors. Right. What did you find? What did I find? Yeah, what did I you mean, find in reading it? In, in reading it, I found that these, uh, uh, well, according to Mark Pomerantz, that the, he confirmed something that I always thought was true, that prosecutors, whether state <laughs> or federal, are subtly or psychologically uh, reluctant to indict a former president. Well, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. So why did he indict a former president a year later when he didn't have any new evidence? Well, that's, that's what, the part, again, I don't that's, get that part. That's the part we don't get. And I yeah. understand that prosecutors, look, prosecutors are judged very much on their wins and losses and going right. after the most difficult defendant of all time is a scary prospect. I don't blame them. Maybe that explains the waffling back and forth. But right. ultimately, I mean, if Bragg, according to Pomerantz, was in the no camp, what brought him back yeah. to the yes camp? And if he did, if they were investigating all these other things, like uh, New York's equivalent of the RICO statute, tax violations, uh, inflating your value for loans and deflating it when it came to paying taxes, why were none of those in there? Why are we only dealing with, with hush money payments? And if the answer is, yeah. as prosecutors, we we only like layups. We only like sure things. We only like things we know we can prove. I don't know that that's a good enough answer for me, because if you right. spend that much time investigating him and you think that he did something wrong, then you should indict. That's kind of the thesis of Pomerantz's book. Yeah. Don't shy away from a difficult prosecution. Right. Uh, and instead, we have all these multiple counts. And till the very end, Joe, I held out hope that there would be something in addition right. to the hush money payments, because I've always thought they were problematic as a prosecutor. Yeah, and, and, and Willie, again, there's so many strong cases against Donald Trump. The obstruction case, I'm sorry, it's easy for me to say from the, the cheap seats, it looks like a slam dunk. The obstruction case looks like a slam dunk. Georgia, man, the fact pattern, horrible for Donald Trump. Absolutely horrible. They got tapes. It's not good. That's not going to end well. So, again, you just kind of wonder why Alvin Bragg, if he didn't have anything else, didn't just step back and let these strong cases move forward.